Good afternoon and good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tanis, and I'm the Sales Support Specialist at Aspira Retirement Living. The team members I support are responsible for helping seniors make the important decision to enter the next stage of life. One we hope will start at Aspira Retirement Living. To take you through this presentation today, I'm pleased to introduce you to Meg Stickle. Meg Stickle grew up in Ottawa, in the Ottawa area, and started volunteering with seniors when she was 12 years old. She studied psychology and gerontology at the University of Ottawa. Meg worked at a retirement residence and recreation and saw that there was a huge need for seniors fitness in the community. She started her company, AIM Fitness, in 2013 with the intention of helping more retirees improve their strength and mobility. Meg is a certified personal trainer, seniors fitness instructor, specializing in fitness for people with medical conditions, and an aqua fitness instructor and a weight management consultant. Meg and her team provide in-home personal training, group fitness classes, and health and wellness presentations in Ottawa and online. Also joining us today is Andrew Craig. He's our National Director of Culinary and Hospitality for our Retirement Division at Aspira. Andrew oversees culinary operations for all of our retirement communities. His passionate team is dedicated to creating a dining experience that cultivates happiness in the daily lives of residents at Aspira. Now on to the fun part. During this session, Meg is going to talk to you about how to build healthy habits that last. This session is tailored to older adults and offers practical advice on nutrition and fitness. As a bonus, we'll demonstrate how our planning worksheet can assist you with formulating simple habits to help improve your health and feel your best. As we move through the presentation today, please feel free to pop any questions you have into the chat. We look forward to hearing your questions and your comments. Now over to you, Meg. All right, thank you, Tanis. Thanks for that great introduction and thank you everyone for who's here today. So we're going to have a very informative webinar. I hope that you um, either take notes or make some mental notes as we go through this. All right. So as you know, we're here to learn about building healthy habits. All right. So I always like to start by asking you, what motivates you? We're all motivated in very different ways. But if we can find out how we're best motivated, then that will really help us to, to, to develop healthy habits. So as you can see in the picture, we've got two examples. I know some people are motivated to exercise to get that glass of wine. Um, this morning, after one of my fitness classes, um, I told the group that we burned about 250 calories. And one lady said, all right, I'm off to get my Christmas cookies. <laughs> so we are all motivated in different ways. And sometimes it's by something that scares us. So maybe like the bear, maybe that makes you pedal a little bit faster. That could be one, one thing. Um, but maybe you don't want to lose your mobility. Maybe you don't want to lose your strength. Or maybe gaining extra weight is not what is what is what you want. Um, so I would love to hear from you. If you are joining us live, be sure to pop um, a note in the chat. Let us know what is it that motivates you. Now, to give you a few other examples, so I work with a lot of people who are over the age of 50, lots of them who are in their 60s and 70s, who are very motivated by their grandchildren. Now, one woman I've worked with said, Meg, I really want to be able to get down on the floor and get back up and be able to play with my grandkids without feeling sore for a few days after. So let us know, what is it that motivates you? All right, so I feel a few here. Um, ah, the wine is motivating, absolutely. <laughs> Staying functional and able to move and enjoy my life. Awesome, that's a really good one. Yeah, so maybe your lifestyle is traveling. Maybe your lifestyle in includes um, different hobbies that require strength. Maybe you want to, you know, stay, stay as independent as possible. So those are really good things. Um, the good feeling after a workout. Awesome, Tannis. Yeah, so maybe you feel good when you exercise. And that's amazing, too. Um, you notice that you have, you know, you feel better about yourself, more confidence. Um, you feel like you can face the day when you have uh, when you have that workout in. So I'm the same way. I definitely love that feeling. All right, so a little bit about myself. Uh, Tannis already gave a little um, 
well, gave a great description of what I've done, but here's some pictures of what I've been up to over the past 10 years. So I've been uh, leading group fitness classes, personal training, working one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and recently, well, two years ago, I had an amazing opportunity to partner with Rogers TV. So at the end, I'll give you some information on how you can connect with me on my TV show called Fit to Over 50 with Meg. Uh, last week on Daytime Ottawa on Rogers TV, uh, myself and my client Lillian here in the middle uh, had a wonderful interview and we demonstrated five exercises you can do during the holiday season. So, um, yeah, so I love, I'm passionate about helping people stay active regardless of what age they are. And you wouldn't believe it, but Lillian is in her late 90s and she is independent. She's exercising every day and seeing amazing results. So I do really recommend if you're on the fence about whether to exercise, maybe you're wanting to know how do I get into that routine, I will be sharing all my secrets today. So I'd love to know, and this is something else you can add into the chat, how has your life changed in the past few years? When we're honest with how what our lifestyle looks like, then that's when we can figure out how to build new habits. So maybe if you're watching and you're retired, maybe you're spending a lot of your time sedentary. You're spending time seated. Maybe you have uh, lots of hobbies that you finally have time for, but now you find you're not as active. You're not getting out as much as you used to. And then we know due to the COVID pandemic and you know the, those effects are still here, still lingering, um, maybe you're not as social or maybe you stop doing some of your, your uh, out in person activities. I know a lot of my clients um, changed their lifestyle drastically during, during the pandemic and they had to start looking at other ways to stay active at home. Many people decide to start exercising at home. So I will be sharing information so you can do that really easily. All right, way more walking. Okay, yes, yeah, that's great. Um, maybe you've been walking more, maybe you haven't been as, as uh, sedentary as some. So that's always good to hear too. All right, so let's dive into what is a habit. So a habit is something that you do repeatedly, but you are often unaware that you do it. So a habit can be as simple as saying a word often. If you ever met someone and they say, um, every three words, that can be a habit. Uh, have you ever met someone who always carries their water bottle with them and they're constantly drinking from their water bottle? That's a habit. Maybe you get up in the morning and you make your bed first thing and you don't even think about it. You just do it. So there's a lot of things we do during the day that we don't even think about, but they are habits. Another definition is a constant, often unconscious inclination to perform an act acquired through its frequent repetition. So maybe this is checking your phone. Does anyone find that's a habit? I know that uh, many of us are addicted to our phones. We check it. Um, maybe a notification goes off and you feel like you've got to check right away. Um, or maybe you have another habit, which is checking the mail. So there's all sorts of habits that we do. So this is really helpful in figuring out how to create new habits. And to break this down, we can explore the habit loop. Now, if anyone wants to dive into habits, and some of the information I'm sharing today is from the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I really recommend reading that book. It is amazing. I, um, I read that last, last year. And um, I, I ended up doing a webinar all about what I learned and linked it to, um, to fitness and nutrition. And um, that's what I'm sharing today with you. So the habit loop starts with a cue. And I will give you an example in a minute. But it starts with a cue. So the cue triggers the brain, um, triggers the brain to initiate a behavior. Number two is a craving. You need to do it. This is the motivational force behind every habit. Next, we have the response. So this is us taking action, the actual habit, which can take the form of a thought or an action. And number four is a reward, the end goal of every habit. So I'm going to share an example for you here. Does anyone like have a sweet tooth like donuts? You may relate to this one. 
So number one, the cue. Here's this gentleman out for a walk and he smells donuts. A nice smell coming from the local donut shop. So this leads to number two, a craving. And all of a sudden, all he can think about is that donut. So this leads to number three, a response. He goes into the store. He's a good guy. He only orders one, but he orders his donut. And then this leads to number four, the reward. He is, enjoys the donut. He feels good. And that this is the habit loop, as simple as, as we can see it. All right. So I'm going to go back before we move on to the the a uh, few tips in habit formation. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about a few ideas of what you can do. And a little bit later, I'll uh, encourage you to come up with your own habit loop and to come up with your own habits that you want to to focus on. Um, but one that I, I find is really helpful is going into your kitchen. So I'll keep it on this slide so you can you can see you can um, relate it to yourself. But I find exercising needs to become a habit in order to do it. And a lot of us think we should be exercising for a full hour at a time, which is not true. Just doing a few exercises here and there can be so beneficial. So well, what I want you to imagine is that your cue is going into your living room. So your plan is to watch TV. But if you start saying, all right, every time I go into my living room, I'm going to do some exercises. And then afterwards, I'll be able to watch my show. So I encourage you to leave out your, your weights, your exercise equipment, something that you will see. So that is your cue. The craving may be, well, I want to feel fit. I want to feel good. So you lift up those weights. You do a few repetitions. Maybe you do a quick five or 10 minute workout. And this is the response. The response is picking up that equipment, taking action, fitting in that quick workout. And then the reward is then feeling good. I got my workout in. I did. It was five minutes and it counts. And now I get to watch my TV show. So you see how you can really look at all of these steps in terms of building new habits. All right, so I'm going to focus on some specific tips to build healthy habits this winter, because it's good to know the system of what we need to do. But now we want to figure out how can we do this? What are the step by step um, uh, moments that we need to take? All right, so number one, my best tip for you is just get started. Now, as you can see, we're in the Christmas season, uh, maybe you're watching this webinar and thinking, oh my goodness, there's a lot to do before Christmas. And maybe you're also thinking about getting a head start on your New Year's resolution, um, or just thinking about how you can make um, this next year really healthy. So just get started. Often we try to wait for the best time or to think, well, you know, I have to be healthy in order to start, but no, just begin where you're at now. And I do encourage you to commit to exercising daily. Now, I work with an incredible man who is 100 years old. He lives in his own home. And he told me when he started exercising with me recently, he said, Meg, I'm either going to do it right or not at all. And what he does is every day in his notebook, he writes down the date and he checks it off when he exercises. And you know what? It's a lot easier to do something every day than every second or every third day. Psychologically, it's easier. It's, it doesn't make sense, but it is true. And I included this because quite often we think, well, it's too cold outside. I'm not going to go for a walk, right? We have excuses come up. So maybe it's too hot in the summer. It's too cold in the winter. Or I hear a lot, well, I just don't feel like it. So I do encourage you to do it anyways, regardless of how you feel. And over time, it will become that habit. And you won't even have any excuses or concerns come up. You'll just want to do it. All right, so how much exercise should we be aiming for? Now, I'm a, a certified personal trainer and a fitness instructor. So quite often when I teach classes and I chat with people, they say, well, how long should I exercise for? What should I do? I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a bit older, so I don't want to do an exercise workout for 20 year olds. What's safe? So I get a lot of those questions. So hopefully this answers that. So we want to aim for 150 minutes of movement every week. 
So down below, you'll see here, I've got examples of what you can do to stay active. Um, and a lot of people think 150 minutes is quite long and that's not possible to fit into a week. But if you break it down to 30 minute segments or even 10 minutes, 10 minutes at a time is fine, 10 minutes three times a day, um, it still counts. And that is huge for a lot of people to hear. Often we think it has to be more than that. So it could look like 10 minutes of vacuuming, 20 minutes of dancing, 60 minutes of gardening, 60 minutes of walking. In the winter, maybe it's hiking or shoveling, but really start to think about breaking those numbers down. How can we fit this into your everyday life? Um, what else? Morning stretches. So really focusing on your back, your neck, your shoulders. Uh, that can be a great way to start the day. You'll feel so good too. Lifting light weights and using resistance bands. Um, and these can help to build bone and muscular strength. And um, exercising, especially with balance exercises, can help us pre to prevent falls. Now, if you're worried about falling, the best thing to do is to build strength in your legs, in your core, so your stomach muscles, and do balance exercises. And I encourage you to try something new. If you're feeling like you're in a bit of a rut or you've been doing the same workout DVD for 10 years, it's time to try something new. Exercising should be fun. Number two, do what you can do. So if you are here, you're over the age of 50, maybe you're a little older than 50, but you think, you know what, I used to be able to do boot camps, I used to, you know, play tennis, I used to run every day, I competed in a sport. Maybe that's not happening these days, and that's okay. It's important to listen to your body, and it's important to adapt your workouts. Now, I, I worked with a lot of people during the pandemic who had been very active before, and then it had been maybe a year or two that they hadn't done much, and they were a little bit discouraged because they were used to exercising at a certain level, used to doing certain things, and just with a year off of not being as, as active, they found they lost a lot of strength and they weren't able to keep up or keep up, we could say, to what they used to do. And it was discouraging for them. So I do encourage you to do what you can, but be kind with yourself as well. Don't try to push yourself beyond what you can do. And that's what I say here. Don't compare yourself to what you used to be able to do. Um, so what you did in your 20s maybe is not happening anymore, but that's okay. There's other things that you can do. Now, if it's been a while since you've exercised or since you've you know, done something like a long hike or a long walk, start slow. I can't tell you the number of people who've, who've talked to me and said, Meg, I did too much. I tried to do what I did before and I pulled a, a muscle in my back or, you know, I just pushed myself too hard. Now I have to take the next few days off. So don't overdo it. And again, it's not a competition, but it's really about um, just getting back into that routine, getting back into the habit. Things you can do are go outside for walks, but if it's too icy or too cold, then walk indoors. Now, one of my clients who I do personal training with, she lives in a wonderful apartment and she has long hallways. So if you live in an apartment building or a retirement residence, I'm sure you've got halls that you can walk up and down. Now, this woman said she, this winter, that um, improving her walking and walking more is important to her. But she said, Meg, I'm going to do one flight of stairs and then walk down the hall, do the next flight of stairs, walk down the hall. And, um, and what she's going to do as well is she's going to bring her resistance band because in the stairwells, she can loop it around the stairs or around the railing and do some exercises right there in the stairwell too. So, you know, here's a woman who she's, uh, she's in her, her late seventies. She wants to stay active. So she's making it enjoyable this winter for herself. Listen to your body, but don't give in to your excuses. So I hear a lot about uh, many excuses, but these are the top three ones I often hear. It's too cold. It's too cold. Or I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Sometimes we say that if we're honest with ourselves. Otherwise, we'll say I'm too busy. <laughs> Do you ever catch yourself saying that? 
I'm too busy to fit in a workout. I'm too busy to eat healthy, too busy to fit in a walk. So what I do encourage you to, to look into if you're feeling like, well, I don't know, I feel like this is true for me, do some Googling and look up on YouTube some very active seniors who are um, winning medals, who are achieving great things, who are still running races, and it will motivate you, I have to tell you. It's so, so encouraging to see these people who are, are pushing themselves mentally to say, you know what, I can do it. I'm going to do my best and I'm going to be happy with the results. So I've included some winter activity ideas in case you are looking for some new ideas for this winter. Um, so go outside, uh, rain, or snow, rain, shine or snow and dress appropriately. Now something I do every year and today it is the winter solstice. I go for a hike every winter solstice. And uh, it's my husband who organizes it. But we go out, it's dark, we bring our our, uh, our flashlights and our headlamps with us, we dress for the weather. So I'm going to be wearing my winter coat, hat, mitts, snow pants, um, good boots. But we do a good, it's like a three kilometer hike. And we end up arriving at this cute little cabin in the Gatineau's. Um, we bring our candle lights and we bring snacks and that's our goal. That's our destination to get to this cabin and then to hike back to the cars. And we do this every year and it is so much fun. And uh, over the years, our friends have enjoyed it too, because it gets you out. It gets you outside and to enjoy the weather. So uh, on that note, and I'll skip down here, go with a friend. Plan something with a friend. If you're talking, if you're chatting with someone, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable than doing it on your own. Unless you have kids and you want to get away from them, <laughs> then going for a walk outdoors is great. <laughs> Um, but be safe as you're doing it. So use walking poles, whether it's a cane or a walker or, you know, going with someone else or letting someone know that, hey, I'm going for a walk just in case you don't come back in a certain amount of time. You can also play with your grandchildren or a pet. Now, one of the ladies I work with has a cute little cat who's nine years old and loves it when her owners go, owner goes down on the floor and she started to play hockey. So this woman's in her 70s. She goes down on the floor. That was her big goal to get down on the floor, to get back up on her own easier. And she has the balls for her cat and the cat plays and she has fun and laughs and enjoys that time with her cat. So, you know, you get creative, have some fun with it. Um, go up and down the stairs. Now, if you've done this once, that doesn't count. You've got to do it at least five times to really get your heart rate up. So try that out. If you don't have stairs, then you can always do um, some marching on the spot or do some circles if you have a smaller room that you're in. And then, of course, I recommend watching a YouTube video or even subscribing to a channel um, so you can get notified when new videos are uploaded. And I do have a YouTube channel. If you uh, Google my business name, AIM Fitness Activities in Motion, you'll find me and uh, I'm uploading new videos every week. All right, so what's the next step we can take to build healthy habits? I find that the people I work with who are the most successful are the ones who do this. They choose a time of day that is designated their workout time. And they don't just say, well, I'm going to exercise in the morning. No, they get very specific. And they'll say, all right, at 10 o'clock, from, from 10 till 1030, that's when I'm going to be exercising. And I have to tell you, those who are committed and who do it, they will do it every day and they will protect that time so that they don't book appointments, they don't have anyone, or they don't pick up the phone if the phone rings, but they say, this is my time for me. All right. So book it in your calendar, book it in your agenda. If this is a new habit that you want to start and you just find you forget, you're busy, put it in your in your phone and set a timer so it goes off at the same time every day. And this will become part of your daily routine. It won't take too long. Um, I would say if you're consistent with it, usually after a month or two, you'll be good. You'll be good to go. Set an alarm as a reminder, we get busy, sometimes we forget what we've committed to. 
And then this is important, treat your workout time as important as a doctor's appointment. So if you have a doctor's appointment, you have that appointment with your specialist, you are not going to cancel. You are not going to be late. You are going to respect that doctor's time. You're gonna get there on time, probably early, and you'll be ready to go when the appointment time is there. So I encourage you to do the same thing with your workout time. And then I do want to add to this that um, a few of my clients find that the 10 o'clock time slot for them does not work because they used to work jobs that were very regimented. So that's the last thing they want now. So instead, what many have found is choosing three different times of day where you can fit in your workout is really helpful. So, for example, this one woman has said, all right, I'm going to have 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m., as my workout time, so I can flex in between those times, depending on the day. So that way, you know, if you have a, um, a, an appointment or you're getting together with someone, you can always pick a different time, but you know you're still going to get your workout in. And then if you need to miss it, reschedule. So whether that's having the time slots um, or like Lillian, who's uh, my client who was on TV with me last week, she said, Meg, I will be out. I'll come back from a meeting or, you know, time with my family. I do my exercises when I come home, even if it's 8 p.m. <laughs> so, you know, talk about dedication. It, once you feel good and you notice that you're seeing improvements, it will help you keep going. Now, if you are looking for some extra tips on motivation and you're just wondering, how do I get motivated? I've put together a free motivation quiz. So you can find this on my website, activitiesinmotion.ca. Um, and I'll give you a description of the two most common types of people. Because what this quiz does is it tells you how you're best motivated depend, um, based on your type. So the one type of person you may be is called a scheduler. So if you're a scheduler, you're someone who likes to um, book things in your calendar, you like to-do lists, you like checking things off your list, and if you are organized, you're going to get it done. Is there anyone who's a scheduler? You can let me know. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a scheduler. If it's on my to-do list, it'll happen. If it's not, it's not happening. So I'll quite often put go for a walk, do some exercises on my to-do list. So if you're a scheduler, if you identify as that. Um, so one of your best techniques is going to be schedule in what you want to achieve, what you want to do. Now, if you need some flexibility in your workouts, you may be an inspired action taker. So an inspired action taker is like um, the other people I talked about who like to have the three different time slots. So they do not want to have a get up and exercise and eat. They don't want to have that, that strict routine. They maybe did that all their lives or it's just not in their personality to do that. So instead, the inspired action taker will really thrive by having a variety of things to do. So maybe this means attending a yoga class one day, finding a YouTube video, um, working on balance the next day, going for a walk another day, having a nice balance, a nice routine, um, or a, a switch up in your routine will be beneficial for you. So let us know if you're an inspired action taker. And if you want to know about the other ty two types, you can take my, my quiz. All right. Okay, thank you. And Tanis just shared um, the link. Yeah, so you can find that, uh, the motivation quiz. That's great. All right, yeah, and let us know if there's any things that you do during the cold months as well. All right, and then tip number four is to celebrate what you do. Don't get down on yourself for what you don't do. This is a big one for a lot of us. Um, I'm working with a woman right now doing personal training with her. She's very hard on herself. So what I see is that she has these high standards. She remembers what she used to be able to do. But now that she's in her 90s, she can't do all of those things. So just yesterday, we did a fitness reassessment. So when I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients, I have them do a number of exercises and flexibility tests. So we can see where they're at at the beginning. And then at the end of the sessions, about six months later, we redo the test so we can see the improvements. 
So I have to tell you, this woman went from being able to lift her foot off the floor. Now she was holding on with a few fingers, but she started with five seconds. That's all she could do. She didn't have the strength in her legs to do more than that. Yesterday, she did it for two minutes. It was incredible. And as she's holding her balance, she said, Meg, I could do this all day. I feel really good. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, so, so she was celebrating what she could do. And I was really pointing out, you know what, even though you can't do all you used to do, look at what you can do. So it's important we do this for ourselves. Now, many people feel guilty when they don't exercise. And this can become a bit of a loop as well, because if you feel bad that, oh, I didn't, I didn't do my exercises again. I didn't go out for my walk again. Oh, I didn't eat healthy again. I didn't drink enough water again. Then we avoid it. And this can happen really easily. Well, we say, well, diets don't work for me, which, you know, uh, P.S. I don't recommend diets, <laughs> but we might say, well, I'm not going to go for walks anymore. Oh, the exercise thing is not for me. Don't give up. Don't give up. Now, let go of guilt and instead focus on what you are doing. So maybe you went for a short walk. Maybe you, you did something healthy for yourself. And that was a big step just to do it. So do celebrate those things. And I encourage you to focus on one activity every day and then do it again the next day. It's easy to feel overwhelmed if we think, okay, I need to change everything about my life and change my diet, change what I'm doing. No, no, focus on one thing, one thing. Um, for many people, that's starting to walk, starting to go for more walks. For others, it's to start lifting light weights and just focusing on that, building up her body strength. For a lot of my clients right now, it is improving your balance. So lifting one foot while you're standing by your counter, um, lifting your foot, lifting one hand, holding it for 10 seconds. Just do that once and then focus on doing it again and repeat. And I like this picture. Doesn't this show you how life is? Your plan, steady, safe, good, fast, but reality often looks like this. Lots of ups and lots of downs. So number, number five is learn to enjoy the process and build fitness and healthy nutrition into your lifestyle for lasting results. Now, I'm sure many of you, you could probably say, yes, I have, um, has may have maybe gone on diets. And why, why I said it, I don't like diets is often it's a lot of restriction. It's a lot of guilt. It's a lot of having to do things a certain way. And often diets are not sustainable. So instead, I recommend adding, adding more into, into what you're eating. So instead of restrictions, saying no chocolate, no candy, no, no sweets, no salt, say, I'm going to add more water. I'm going to add more vegetables. I'm going to add more healthy grains. And adding instead of restricting, it, uh, it really can uh, make you feel a lot more positive about what you're doing. And remember, it's a health and fitness journey. So there are going to be ups, there are going to be downs. Um, now, I've been doing this for a long time, about 16 years, working with, uh, with adults 50 plus, um, helping them with their fitness and nutrition. And what I find is that things will happen, guaranteed. Even the healthiest people I've worked with, the most fit people I've worked with, have had things come up. Um, now, one woman, she had to have... Um, shoulder surgery. I just talked with her recently. She had both shoulders done, but she's back at the fitness class again. She hasn't stopped completely. There's another woman I know, and she had shingles, and that was a horrible experience for her. I know someone else who had a really bad case of COVID and now has long COVID symptoms, but all of these people, what really makes them stand out in my mind is they had something that happened, life happened, there was an illness or a setback, but they didn't give up. They kept going. They said, all right, I'm going to take time off to take care of myself, but I'm going to do what I can. So I'm still going to think positively. I'm still going to drink my water, focus on what I can eat, and focus on moving the parts of my body that still work. 
So even if you have a really bad back, you can still exercise your legs, even from a seated position. If you have a really bad shoulder right now, you can still work on your balance. So quite often we say, well, I don't feel 100%, so I'm not going to exercise at all, or I'm not going to focus on healthy living at all. So I really do encourage you to change your mindset and instead focus on what can I do? Let's enjoy the process so that it's part of your fitness routine and part of your lifestyle. All right, so what are some next steps that you can take? Do you need accountability? Maybe you do. Maybe it's connecting with a friend and saying, all right, the new year is coming. Let's sign up and join a program or a class or let's take a course together. And looking for a class that is geared to your needs and level of fitness. Now, uh, whether it's, you know, going to a community center or a local, um, a local club that offers classes, look for something specific. Now, I used to teach um, fitness classes for people with MS, multiple sclerosis, and it was an amazing class and it really brought out great people who all had very common goals. So there's lots of very specific classes for you um, if there is something or if you have a medical condition that you're concerned about. And then find a class for adults 50 plus, not 20 plus. There probably is a difference. There is. We know there is. So make sure that you feel really comfortable instead of pushing yourself too hard. And then learn about how you're motivated and just get started. So if you know that you're, you're motivated to get up in the morning, do your exercise routine right away, then do it. Um, if you find that you're like other people and you are not awake in the morning, maybe you're not a great sleeper, but you have more energy later in the day, make that your time to, to focus on you. All right, so let's plan it out. So we're going to be doing a, a little exercise here to come up with what habit do you want to focus on in 2024? So I, I encourage you to get out a piece of paper, get out a pen, and we're going to uh, quickly come up with a few ideas of um, what you can do. Now, you can do this for fitness or nutrition. It's up to you. But I'll share the example here that I've written out. So as we go through it, feel free to jot down your ideas. All right. So number one, the cue. So this is what triggers the brain to initiate a behavior. So I find for a lot of my clients, they do really well by setting their dumbbell weights in a, in a spot that they'll see. Maybe it's resistance bands, maybe it's your, your bike, maybe it's something else. Um, but the cue is your dumbbell weights in this example. So number two, the craving, the motivational force behind every habit. In this case, you want to improve your strength. You want to feel strong. Um, maybe reaching for things overhead is becoming a little harder. Maybe, um, you know, you're cooking or cleaning and you realize, oh, okay, my, my shoulders, my arms aren't as strong as I want. So that's the motivational force behind it. Number three is our response. So the actual habit, which can take the form of a thought or an action. So in this case, it's an action. Pick up the weights and do 10 repetitions. So right there, that is your response. That's what you're doing. Um, number four is the reward, the end goal of every habit. So for this example, it's a sense of accomplishment and feeling great. And over time, you're going to notice that you feel stronger. You're able to do maybe some extra repetitions. Maybe you find that the three pound weights you're using are now very light and you need to order some heavier weights. So this is an example of, uh, of a fitness related goal. Now we can do a nutrition one as well. And I'll do the water, the water idea, because I know a lot of people know that they need to drink more water. So uh, one of my clients, she's really smart. All my clients are very smart. So I learned a lot from them. But one especially has decided that she has water bottles in every room of her house. And this is so she doesn't forget to drink water because that is a big focus for her. So she has her water bottles, you know, one in the kitchen, there's one in the living room, one in her bedroom, one beside her computer. And so for her, number one, the cue is seeing her water. 
Number two is the craving. So she has a goal of drinking three water bottles per day. Now these are the smaller ones. So it's not the huge leaders. These are smaller ones, so, but that's realistic for her. So she wants to feel hydrated. She wants to feel that accomplishment. Um, so number three is the response. When she sees her water, she has a few sips, whether she's thirsty or not. That is the response. She just does it. And then number four, the reward. Well, her goal is to drink those three bottles. So at the end of the day, she'll have a look and she'll be able to see how much water has she had in from these water bottles and she can even it out and then see that, oh, okay, I did it. I met that goal and she feels really good. All right. So those are a few examples. If anyone wants to share, uh, you don't have to share one, two, and three, and four, but if you want to share what your theme is, what your habit is that you want to, to form, you can let us know in the chat. Um, and it can be really helpful to break it down like this, because this is what's going to um, kind of fill in the gaps and help you think about not just, well, I want to lose weight, or, oh, well, I know I should drink more water, but this is really putting that plan into place. Uh, including bringing in that motivational piece as well. Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Andrew for the next few slides. Thank you very much, Meg. That was really informative. I, I got to tell you, as I've gotten a little more gray in my beard and trying to do the the exercise a lot of my excuses come out <laughs> mm, you're not alone absolutely so I, I just wanted to touch a little bit on what we do with the spirit and our dining rooms um, some of our menus and if we can just pop to the next slide really are about our fresh and seasonal choices and uh, making sure that we've got some great healthy nutrition uh, nutritious options for our residents. Um, it's so important for us to use fresh products, fresh produce, um, and create some great healthy choices for you. Um, now our executive chefs, of course, uh, are always active in our communities. And one of the things that I suggest as well is participating in our food for thought meetings with our chefs. We're gonna work on uh, uh, more of our nutritious habits in uh, 2024 about using our menu to actually select through uh, our, our fresh and seasonal options and to interact with our chef on our nutrition facts and information as well. Uh, and on our next slide, um, really encouraging everybody to participate in a group. Um, it's always better when friends get involved and especially in our communities, it's such a sense of uh, uh, empowerment when everybody else is uh, willing to join along and, and to get a group together to do something. This is just an example of what our menu looks like where we do have our comfort classics and those hearty meals, but we do have that fresh and seasonal selection as well uh, that you can go through and use the actual menu template to highlight what your meals can be for the week. You can walk through that with your group and decide, well, we're going to try this today. Uh, whether it's our fresh made soups and salads or having a full meal with those fresh and seasonal choices. It's also great to talk to your family and get them involved. Have a challenge that just doesn't have to be with you. It can be, well, we're doing uh, uh, this meals, uh, these meals this week and have your family communicate with you with what that looked like when they made it in their home. Um, and again, that uh, friends groups always help out. Those are a lot of the things that we do as Spira, and uh, we find that our residents really love participating in this uh, as well. So and that's it for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Looks great. Well, Looking at some of these ideas and uh, getting inspired. <laughs> great food options. I was just saying in the chat that I'm lucky enough to work in a community today. So I'm going to be fed very well, very shortly. I am in BC. <laughs> oh, great. In BC as well. <laughs> Well, thank you to both of you. That was really wonderful. Uh, Meg, it's a lot of great ideas. I did write my plan. It's right oh, here. Good, yep. good. I'll, I'll get on it. I think I need a plan. Um, and thank you, Andrew, for explaining a bit more about what we do. I don't see any questions in the chat, but yeah, we'll send out this recording afterwards. And I just want to thank everybody who participated today. It was a great presentation.
Awesome. Thank you, Tannis. I just have my last slide up here for those who are wanting to connect. Uh, I did mention my Fit Over 50 show on Rogers TV can be viewed um, daily, Monday to Friday at 8.30 a.m. So these are free 25-minute workouts. And you'll see my cute little puppy here, Finley, who shows up on each one. Now, if you don't get Rogers TV, you can also um, get the replays on my website. So they are saved to YouTube. Um, and then I am doing a five-day fitness challenge. So anyone who's wanting to um, get into the habit of exercising, I send out 15-minute videos for those five days, all focused on strength and balance. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And if you're wanting to start that in January, you can also sign up uh, through my website. Um, and then just at the bottom there, I have one of my videos from my YouTube channel that you can check out um, focused on core, back, and neck exercises. So um, yeah, so we'd be happy to connect with you if anyone has any questions at all about uh, their fitness routine or, or building habits. Excellent, I think you're removing all of our excuses. <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Great. Excellent, right. well, if you don't have anything else, I'll let everybody go. My iPhone, my watch is reminding me it's 10 minutes too and I need to get up and move. So. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right. Thanks so much and have a Thank great day. Thank you very day. much. Thank you very Bye much, now. everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.